What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over how you can choose and farm for Gigantamax Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> Right now, at the time of release, there's a promoted event for four of the Gigantamax Pokemon. Scent, Scorch, Butterfree, Dreadnaw, and Sandaconda. All of the other Gigantamax Pokemon, you currently cannot easily find. However, now there is actually a method to getting these Gigantamax Pokemon. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a while and you've seen my guides for this game or my previous games, you know that I really like to really, really thoroughly test a strategy, an idea, and something else before I make a video about it. That way I can say without a doubt in my mind that it is 100% accurate. As of right now, it's going to be somewhat speculative because I haven't been able to recreate this because the odds of it happening are very, very low. There is a very good chance that this could happen. People have told me that this happens, but you know, you should always believe what strangers say on the internet. Since the game is released, we have now figured out exactly how the dens and the den spawnings work. There's actually a lot of steps involved in figuring out exactly how we are going to be able to get these Gigantamax Pokemon, and I'm gonna go over it piece by piece here. First of all, this is gonna involve some save spamming and you're gonna need a lot of wishing stones. You can speak to any of the guys here, wishing stones are 3,000 watts each. And of course you can get watts by just going around, pressing A in front of the inactive dens. Now a disclaimer, again, this is a theory, this is something I've been working on, this is something I have a lot of hours in, this is something I've used a lot of resources for, but it is still experimental information. The game is still very brand new. I'm going to have a pin comment down below, and that pin comment is going to have my findings. If I'm 100% right, or if I'm wrong, or if there's any updates or any findings to this, that pin comment is where you should look. Right now, just scroll down real quick, quick, look at that comment. And if that comment has any updates to what I'm talking about right here, then that is going to retroactively affect what I'm saying in this video. But I'm pretty sure this is real, this is accurate, this is how this works. And ever since this game came out, I feel like we've become a very tight community. Me and all you guys checking out my videos. And I thank you for that. And if you're part of the 54% of the people who are not subscribed to my channel but watching my videos and they're recommended anyways, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It lets me know that you appreciate the work that I put into these videos. And I thank you for that. For all you know, you may have thought you were subscribed because of how much you see my videos anyways. This raid den right here, is the one that has Gigantamax Grimmsnarl, Grimmsnarl. I have tried nine hours to spawn him here. I've used all my wishing pieces and all of my watts to try to make this happen and the my luck was not happening. If you put in a wishing piece, there is a 10% chance you are going to get a purple beam. What that purple beam means is that it's going to be pulling from the rare encounter table. On screen right now, I have a chart of the regular encounter table and the rare encounter table. So there is a 90% chance it's going to pull from one of the Pokemon at the top and a 10% chance it's going to pull from the bottom. You can actually negate that completely by choosing to only pull from the bottom in what I'm going to be calling wishing piece spamming. In order to do this, you have to go to options. You have to turn your text to slow. You don't actually have to turn it to slow, but when you first start this off, it's going to make it a lot easier. Do a hard save right in front of it. Press A in front of it. There doesn't seem to be anything in the den. Do you want to throw in a wishing piece? Yes. Would you like to save your adventure so far? Now, the timing of this is very critical. And if you're using Joy-Cons, make sure that you are in direct communication with your Nintendo Switch and not like under the table, off to the side. If your Switch is behind a TV, this is easier in handheld mode. You could use a Pro Controller, but your timing needs to be kind of exact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit A when it says yes. And soon as I hit A, I'm going to hit the home button. I actually hit it a little too early. Now. Did you see that freeze frame here and go really, really slowly? What I did is I saw a red beam right before it came up at the bottom with the saving prompt. And I don't want a red beam, I want a purple beam. So hitting the home button, I'm gonna close the software out and I'm going to relaunch the software. Essentially what we're doing is we are choosing to close the software before the text 
has the chance to prompt the actual game save. And here we are right back in front of the den. I still have my wishing piece and I can throw my wishing piece in again. There we go. It was still red. In a sandstorm, it's a little hard to tell. Trust me, it's red. If it's purple, you know. How much time you have before the actual ray of light comes out depends on a couple of things. Mostly it depends on your actual character's position in regard to the middle of the den. After you hit A, if you're not completely facing it, it does a very small animation to face toward it, which actually gives you a slightly larger window. Now I know for a fact that it is a 10% chance that you are going to get a purple beam. How do I know this? Because I tested this 130 times yesterday. I tested this for nine hours and I was able to come up with exactly 10% of the time, this will be a purple beam. In addition to that, the purple beams take longer to actually spawn, so your chance of hitting the home button without seeing it is actually higher, which is a good thing. It may happen your first time, it may happen your 20th time, it may happen exactly your 10th time, that's how random number generation works. So if you do it a few times, don't be discouraged. Plus, this is not a race, this is a marathon. This is something that is more akin to shiny hunting than just a simple one hour method. You may be lucky. You may get this your first time. You may get this in your first hour. I may have just been very unlucky. But by me making this video and putting it out here, you guys are gonna be able to try this. There we go, perfect. As soon as I hit the home button, I saw that purple light happening. This purple light means a few things. One. It has already chosen a Pokemon from the rare encounter table. We have completely excluded the common encounter table. That's gone. Now we are only looking at this. I believe that what it did is it looked for how many stars that it wanted to give me. A three star Pokemon, a four star Pokemon, or a five star Pokemon. From my findings, it gave me a three star Pokemon 30% of the time. It gave me a four star Pokemon 35% of the time. It gave me a five star Pokemon 35% of the time as well. So that means that there's a one out of 10 chance that I get a purple light. Great, we've already met that requirement. Now what the game does is, I need to be in that 35%. And then, if it is a five star Pokemon, it's then going to pick a number between one and 100. And if it's the 5% chance that it's the Gigantamax Grimmsnarl, then I'm good. 100%, ready to go, no problem, it's that Pokemon. However, there's a chance that it's not that. So essentially, soon as that purple beam came up, I had a 1.75% chance to get Gigantamax Grimmsnarl. The, this chart, by the way, is from Cerebi. If you go there, you just go to the raid dens and you can see all the Pokemon sprites, pick whichever den that you want to hunt for and you can do this method. It's worth noting that I am in the post game and I believe that directly influences the star amounts that I'm going to encounter. I got Hydreigon or Tyranitar about 15% of the time when only looking at the five star raids. I may have been close. I may have been one click away from getting it, but nope. The game picked a three star, which is 30% of the time, and I got a three star Thievil. Now you're stuck with the issue of you have this den here, and you either need to wait 24 real life hours, or you need to defeat this Pokemon, or you need to drop a wishing piece in a different den. That will then remove your wishing piece from this den, and you can begin this entire procedure over again. Again, I want to state that this is not fast. This is not a quick method. This is something that is going to take you a long time if it does work at all, is what I'm saying. I have gone through all my wishing pieces, all my watts. I could not make this happen, but I'm fairly certain that it can in fact happen. This is like, if we're talking like a year from now and you have all of the Gigantamax Pokemon, except for one, there's one you can't get. You need to get Machamp or Gengar or Grimmsnarl and there has not been a promoted event. And that is the one keeping you away from doing your collection and completing your collection. Then this is, this is your end game here, Tony Stark. This is what you have to do. By then, you'll have millions of watts saved up and you could do this no problem. Heck, there's a chance you could do this faster than uh, hunting down a shiny Pokemon or an ultra shiny Pokemon. I just made a video on that. Apparently those are super rare too, one out of 65,000. But by me making this video and making this discussion with you guys, you may decide to do this. You may have wishing pieces and you have no idea what to do with them. Just do the save spamming right in front of here. If you do the save spamming, you're able to generate that purple. 
and then you have that 1.75% chance at finding that Pokemon. These are my findings so far. I hope that you're able to have better luck than I have. If you did do this, take a screenshot video and tweet me at Austin John Plays. I need to see video evidence of this actually working in action, and then I know 100% that it's real. It can happen. Not a picture, not taking a picture of your Switch. Hold down the screenshot button, share to Twitter. That's how I need that. Well, anyways, guys. We're still figuring things out about this game. Thank you for checking out this video. If you haven't done so, be sure to hit the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.